just give yourself a hand praise in this place this morning. I wanted to be sweet on y'all this morning, ladies, mothers. Uh, to God be the glory, I want to say happy Mother's Day uh, to you all. Amen? Amen. And we hope that uh, your rest of your day will be filled with joy and excitement. And we ask that these fathers and these brothers and these children uh, allow you all to have your rest today. I've already known that Nate doesn't cook for his mama this morning, and uh, she's going to have a good time. It's unfortunately that we did not partake in that dinner. Amen. 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 To my mother, happy Mother's Day. And we are so uh, grateful that you are here. To those who are not uh, with Mother, uh, we pray that uh, your space will be filled with the memory of uh, what such a great time you had with your mother. Very short message uh, to encourage your mothers this morning, Psalms. 139, Psalms 139. Our, our focal verse is verse 13. If you stand for the reading of God's word, we will just read verse 13, and then I will uh, endeavor to uh, present my argument, and then we'll be done. Psalms 139, verse 13. For thou hast possess my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. You may have your seat in the presence of the almighty God. I want to talk to you this morning, mothers, about the importance of a mother. The importance of a mother. It is important. No matter how mean you are after the delivery of your child, no matter um, how right in the eyesight of the public or popular opinion, you are very important. A mother is someone that Guys, the house. The, the Bible very uh, uh, explicitly explained that uh, the man is the head of the house. Uh, so therefore it becomes uh, indicative that when the man is present and doing what the man supposed to be doing, he is the head of the house. But a whole lot of our house the man is absent. We can talk about everything, but we don't talk about the right thing. And the right thing is for us to realize that the dynamic that God had placed in the house is quite unique how God orchestrated the woman. <laughs> he he made the woman second by allowing man to go to sleep. Took a reel from his side and not his back. Which denotes the fact that man is not ahead of the woman, but man is working with the woman. And the woman working with the man. A lot of us have taken the role, men, to usurp the authority over the woman when you don't have authority over your own self. When you can't control who you are, you want to control somebody else. You want to tell you want to you want to tell them how to vote. You want to tell them how. How to believe. You, you, want, you want to tell them everything. Except sharing with them the word of God. And through the sharing the word of God, 
you come to a reasonable expectation that is that is uh, helpful in your house because all the homes in here is different no matter how we look at it there, there are some things that we do in every home in here that some of us will quibble at our feet to see some people do while others will jump for joy because you are doing just what I want you to do. Every house is different. So God, in, 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 in designing the house, he allowed the woman <laughs> to take on a role that is quite unique. I thought it very interesting because I can't wait to talk about these dogmatic men on, on, on Father's Day. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to tear your butt up. <laughs> I can't wait, you know, good men. Because men are lazy, sorry, and cheap. <laughs> Women, you messy. You gossip. You care, you care carry on too much foolishness. When God is really saying, my role I have for you is different than what you're doing. God gives you such a unique position in life. Every leader had a mother. Think about it. Every, every great man, every great woman, every fast girl, every fast boy, all had a mother. Somebody was telling them, you can't write. Somebody was telling them when they was coming up that you're great. You can do it. Some of them became chemically dependent because the pressures of life became such a hard task. And they was overcome by an addiction. And now you hold them hostage because they wasn't there for you when you grown. You got your own family. <laughs> David says that for thou hast possessed my reign. David is talking to the Lord. And in the midst of him talking to the Lord, he said, Thou hast covered me. Right. In other words, he protected him. I want to share with you that no matter how, how bad your life was, is, or will be, God is covering you. <laughs> In other words, if God is covering you, you ought to thank God by clapping your hands. Be grateful that the Lord is covering you. Now watch this. David opens up. He said, O oh Lord, thou searchest me and known me. In other words, God know who we are, right? Woman, God know who you are. He know how you hook crook, how you lie, how you lie, still and cheap. He known you. He have, he have searched your heart. He created you. Huh? And in the midst of him, Creating you, he said, Thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising. In other words, he knows when you're lying and when you're not lying. He knows the intent, the private intent of your heart. You know how you do things for attention? How, how, boy, look at him, thank you. What motive behind what you do? You're always doing stuff that that you think is going to create a dependency upon you to lock your position in. God ain't concerned with that. What God concerned with is that you will serve his people with a pure heart. Yeah, yeah. To love his people regardless of the benefit that you can receive back. 
that's serving God. So watch this. God says, Thou compassed my path, and my lying down, and are acquainted uh, with all my ways. <laughs> In other words, he know who you are. He know when the lights go out, what you do. <laughs> he know, he know that you ain't all that in come jail. Huh? Come on now. He know your weaknesses and your strengths. One, God knows everything. He said, for there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knoweth it all together. Uh, uh, Y'all get the picture? David is, is, is so eloquently stating that no matter where we at in life, God knows who we are. Now, don't forget, David was a whore. <laughs> David, David looked over and he, in an adultery. He looked over and he saw Bathsheba bathing naked. And I'm glad David said, I got to have that woman. The sculpture dream, she was with the bodacious curves and plum granite nostrils. David said, in his heart, he said, gotta have. We talked about last week that the heart is desperately wicked. It, it, it continuously produces evil and manufactures evil thoughts. So we got to watch our heart. All right? Because our heart will tell us what we're what we going to get, even though it ain't good for us. Huh? It, it keeps us chemically addicted. Our heart. Because once our heart, once it's in our heart, our mind. It's just like the first cousin. It just follow whatever our heart says. They just if 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 the if the heart says we're gonna eat pork this morning, the mind said if I had some gravy. Yeah. So David says here that God knows everything. Don't don't get it wrong. That God, listen, God knew he was gonna see that woman. And, and, and when he looked at her, he was going to have favor upon her. In other words, his, it, it was pleasant to the eyes. And he said, well, what about her husband? Man, what about him? Send him to war. Y'all read the story. Send him to war. He's the captain of the army. Don't, don't worry. Put him on the front line. Well, you know that people on the front line are the first to go. Put him out there. Whatever it is, I got to have that woman. In other words, in a woman, mothers, you have such an attractive feature that God puts a magnet in your bloodstream on the positive side and gave the man the negative in his. And it causes us to attract all the time. It don't call us to repel. It calls us to always come together. God has a unique way of taking care of his family. And, and it was great to me because he allowed the woman to come and nourish the child. Have you ever heard of a child cry, David! Something happened? No, he don't never cry to hand. He always cried. He said, because thou has, has covered me in my mother's womb. In other words, there's a connection between a child and the mother. So it's important. No matter what society, which is so funny today, uh, uh, you can censor someone language on TV, but you can't censor two men kissing. When there was a time that two men and two women can kiss on TV. There was a time when Victoria's Secret couldn't even uh, 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 display the secret. <laughs> which was never a secret. Well, she's showing everybody anyway. But at the same time, you couldn't have it on TV. Right. But today, everything goes. It's so unique that the church 
has accepted what they are seeing and not what they believe. In other words, the Bible says if sin is an abomination, the church cannot accept sin. A mother, when she is with child, she gives the child every, every, every protection that she has for herself. She, she watches over. She, she see, a good mother sings to her baby. A good mother uh, uh, reads to her baby. A good mother teaches her child, even in the womb. So when a child comes out, some of us say, they've been here before. <laughs> no, it's that the mother took a lot of time out with the child. Some of us is <laughs> not the sharpest tool in the shade. I mean, I had hit my head four or five times in order to get it the first time. And God is saying, in, in mothers, you can shape your child. Okay? Because you covered them even in the womb. Isn't it beautiful? when you see a mother for the first time, how she want to read every book in the world. How, how she got to drink certain water. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, she act like she act like she better go through a metamorphosis. <laughs> no, baby, you just better have a baby. <laughs> Back in the day, it was different. You just, listen, you got to break it, pop it out, and you went on back to work. Now today, you got six weeks off. It's a different thing. But God gave you that. So it's your job as a mother to always protect your child. It's so unique that see a mother pull the brakes on the man. All right. And she said, oh, you ain't going to treat him like that if you don't treat her like that. I like a mother because a mother gives disciplinary action inside the household. Don't get to the place in your life that you are not allowing the mother men to run the house. Because a woman runs the house. It ain't no old way of living. It's the right way. Because if the man is out for war, he's out making a dollar, then the woman is going to be 9 out of 10 with those children. So listen to what David said. He says, Thou hast beset me behind and before, and hast laid thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whether shall I go from your spirit? Mm. Or whether shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Case in point, no matter where we are in life, he is with us. No matter how many wrongs you have made, he is with you. No matter how many ups and downs you have been through, yeah. he is with you. He's the saving line. No matter how far you get out there, All right. tell me you're calling back. No matter how far you get out there, he can wind you back in. God is saying, don't re remember one thing, my brothers, my sisters, is that God is able to tell me you're calling back, mom. That God is able to do far exceedingly, abundantly above all that you may ask or think. He's able. What he's done for others, he'll do the same thing for you. You follow? Ain't no punches pulled. He, he looks over the small ones just as well as the large ones. 
He's there with you. So no matter how many kids you have, God is there. No matter how much hell your children put you through, God is still there. He may not come when we want it, but he's always on time. You can't, you can't give up on what the children are going through. Only thing you got to do is put them in the hand of the Lord. And when you put them in the hands of the Lord, the Lord himself, the Lord himself will lead you. That's what he says here. So he said, if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light upon me. Yeah, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness as the light or both are like thee, for thou hast possessed my reign, and you covered me. I want to share with you this morning, God is covering your life, mother. Only thing God wants you to do is to be a mother. Now, what does a mother do? A mother teaches her kids the way of the Lord. She, she encouraged them to make decisions. And when the decisions that they made are wrong, she don't scorn them, she teaches them. See, a mother allows the latitude of you to grow. Right, wrong, or indifferent. Whereas a man said, if you do this again, I'm going to push you upside the head. That's the hardness of life. God don't have two mothers in the house. He has a man and a woman. The reason why it's such a diabolically opposed, unorthodox acceptance of same sex is goes contrary to the word of God. It goes contrary to the makeup of what God calls us. Sometimes we need salt on our food, am I right? Huh? And sometimes you need pepper. If you're Latino, you got cayenne. Yeah. Jalapeno. You start eating some 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 bell peppers with, with hot sauce sprinkled on. You like spicy. Because it's the culture that you came up in, right? Well, the same way in God, there's a culture in the church. Now, I've been noticing, I've been noticing, when we came up at New Zion, I know New Zion and Living Word are two different churches, so, so follow the part of your mother's name, I'm about to close it. At New Zion, children can't drink water in the church. We can even have peppermint, nor can we chew gum. The ushers will, 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 will have a piece of a program and tell you, put it in your mouth. Whatever you need, I put it in that. Today, y'all come up in with water, you drink it. You, you, you know, you ain't you ain't paying to clean up, but you're drinking water, wasting water. You got you got you got black eyed peas, cornbread, you know, mustard green juice, pickles, and everything else in church. People don't people don't respect the house of God. But somebody come in your personal house and drink in your living room. On your brand new furniture, you work four years to get. You'll go crazy, won't you? I mean, talk to me real. See, I'm a real person. I get up in your face. What God is saying, see, a mother, a mother was on the usher board at New Zion. And whatever that mother allowed in her house, that's what she allowed in the church. And that was nothing. When certain ushers came, we hated to sit on that side. Because we know that worship, she was going to really direct traffic. You couldn't sit where you wanted to sit. 
No walking, no talking. You ever use the bathroom? You better use it before you came in the church. What happened? The mother became last. Men became weak. And the church has suffered ever since. The woman can't point her hand at the man and say, what the man has not done, because she hasn't done the same thing. The woman can't get mad at any little girl in here, because the Bible says what a woman's job is supposed to do is to teach these young girls. My question to y'all ladies, how many times have I heard you stand up? It's the 25th year our church has been here. How many times have you stood up and said, we have a young girls meeting on next week? We're going to teach the young girls the difference in the forks that supposed to sit at the table. We're going to teach the young girls how, how to uh, uh, love one another and then how to have conflict resolution with another young lady. Because you know at, at some of these tender ages that the young girls are today, they have issues because hormones are finally waking up from a deep sleep. They are, they, they, they are eating steroids, so they, they, they look like they're 80 when they're 20. Oh, yeah. They're growing. Real fast. Everything is happening at, at, a, at a supersonic speed. And how many of us have taken the time now to say, this is how you be a young lady? So you can't get mad, woman, at, at the girls when they come and they don't have no clothes on in church. They got a skirt that, that, come, that comes up to here. You can't get mad. Because you ain't spend no time training. You can't say it should have been at home with the mother. No, the mother nourishes the child, teaches her children. And that's what God is holding you mothers today. He's holding you accountable for these young girls. You, you are producing who you are in your eyes. Unequivocally, I can see Deja and Hannah with a whole bunch of kids from the neighborhood in their house. I can see Justin with, with, with a whole bunch of land when he get in the NFL, with a whole bunch of land with a whole bunch of cows and junk. And never, and never, ever, ever put it in the, in the bone. I can see, I can be old then. I only live for the day. Holden was, was, was a was a, a, a college speaker on yesterday. Amen. And, and, and you, you wouldn't have known it unless you've been there. But, 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 but we, we don't value what we have. And God is saying, woman, you got to train your child. The Bible says that we train a child when they are young, that when they get older, they will not depart from their training. There are three things that I want to talk about, and uh, three points I want to leave with you. Point number one, the miracle of life only uh, comes from the Lord through the mother. The miracle of life only comes from the Lord through a mother. I don't care what a man said, he got pregnant. He didn't get pregnant. She got pregnant. God don't make no mistake. Now, society can say anything, and you want you want to believe a lie, believe a lie. I don't, because I know that man can't carry no 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 child. So point one is the miracle of life only is by the Lord using the mother. Understand that when you produce life, God is holding you accountable to teach your child. You don't throw away your child. 
Point two. The setting of who you are was shaped, was was sharpened by your mother. When you know Proverbs thirty one, that's the that's the scripture that people preaching on Mother's Day. A virtuous woman, right? But if you go to chapter third, <laughs> run at twelve and start reading the 12 through the 15 and on down, you will realize that, 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 that Solomon tore y'all up before he came to say, now who can find this virtuous woman? See, he can tell you how negative you are. Let, 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 let's go right quick to uh, Proverbs 30. Oh, it's right here on my phone. Thanks. It says, Let's start at uh, verse 13, 20. There's a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There's a, there's a generation, oh, how lawfully are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There's a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor off the earth and needy from among men. The harshly has two daughters crying, give, give, that you came late, now you're leaving early. Sit down, uh, bro, uh, 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 Caldwell. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not. It is enough. The grave and the barren woman the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that said not, is it enough? Watch this. This is for you, Brooke Owen. The eye that mocked at his father and despised it to obey his mother, the raven of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagle shall eat. There be three things which, there be three Things which are too wonderful for me, yea, for which I know not. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent on a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of a sea, the way of a man with a maid. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wiped her mouth and said, I have done no wickedness. For three things. The earth is quiet, uh, uh, disquiet, and the fall which I cannot bear. For a servant he reigned, a fool when he is filled with me. An odious woman when she is married, and a handmaid that is her heir to her mistress. There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. Watch this. The ant are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The conies, which are but feeble folks, yet make it they their house in rock. The locusts have no king, <laughs> yet go forth all of them by band. The spider take it hold with her hand, and is the king's palace. Now there be three things which go well. Four are coming and going. A lion, which is strong among beasts, and turning not the way for him. A greyhound, and and he goat also. And a king, against whom there is no rising up. If thou done foolishly, in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast thought evil, lay thine hand upon the mouth. Surely the crooning of milk bringeth forth butter, and the ringing of those nose bringeth forth blood, for the forcing of wrath bringeth forth strife. Now, verse 31 says, And the word of the king, Limonel, the prophecy of his mother taught him, What, my son, what? Uh, the son of my womb, and what? The son of my vow. Give not strength to the woman, nor thy way to that which destroy a king. And then he go on and say, and who can find it? Verse 10, 
who can find a virtuous woman. See, that's a whole different perspective of who can find this virtuous woman. When you talk about how treacherous you are, God is saying, you're not what you say you are, but be who God wants you to be. Don't give up. Point two, the setting of who you are is sharpened by the love. She is busy building her house and not destroying. Lastly, the mother is valuable uh, in her role in the house. You remember John 19 and 25 when Jesus said on the cross, he said, woman, behold your son. Behold your son. Jesus on the cross was telling the people that don't forget your mother. And then he told the disciples, take care of my mother. See, when we start taking care of our loved ones, what God does is orchestrate the path of our life. I want to encourage you mothers today to love your children. Do what's in the best interest of your child. You come out of a situation with your children. You're not their friend. You're the parent. Be a parent. Guide them. Be a wife. Love your husband. Don't love somebody else. Baby. Love you. Don't treat somebody else's husband differently than you treat your own. Love you. And God, mothers, will help you and strengthen you. Now, Brother Caldwell, I want you to take that. Uh, Bouquet to your mom. And, and I know, I, I know you. I, I, you know, I, I want you to dry stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I wanted to tell you that I, I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna uh, break it down. And that's what God wants us to do. My time is up. I thank you for your. God wants us to prepare our hearts and our minds and to encourage our spirits. He wants us to be who God said he is to us. Every mother, be a strong mother. Every child, be a strong child. Every, every, every daughter, be a strong daughter. Know that no matter how you are this morning, your day is coming. There's going to be some day you're going to be a mother. There's going to be some day you're going to be a, a uh, you have a daughter or you have a son. But no matter what it is or who it is, be who God wants you to be. And the only way you can do that is that you take one day at a time and you start now. God is, more, he want to build you. I hate people saying a virtuous woman. Yeah, she is. She far above root. But most women I know, or hell this, they raise more hell than they do joy. They got selfish ways. Because you know what? They weren't taught in church to love each other. They weren't taught in church to, 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 to deal with conflict resolution very well. We fight all the time. We shouldn't be doing that. God wants us to co-mingle, to come in and out, laugh and, and kneel with each other. I noticed on yesterday as we were driving from Alexandria to, to Shreveport on a motorcycle, everybody on motorcycle, we got a certain language. We could be on the opposite side of the road going a hundred miles an hour. We all got the same language. We ain't fighting against each other with the language. We speak the same thing. God is saying in church, if we can start speaking, ladies, the same thing, maybe all the 
girls in here would love to be princes one day. Would love to, to, to have the pretty flower dresses on. They don't have to have no jeans on. With no buddy down. That, that, that's what guys wear. Girls can, can come back to be girls. twisted in their head trying to be something that God did not make trying to love this person and that person if we can train while they're young and shape their futures they'll be the teachers, the doctors, the lawyers the counselors that everybody looks for I know there's power in mentorship I know there's power in taking time out with somebody. God is asking, would you do it? Be a mother. You protect people when they're in the womb. Likewise, spiritually, while they are developing their God gift talents, you can nourish them. You can encourage them. Uh, God is looking for us to be everything he wants us to be. So ladies, I gave you some candy to say we fathers want to be sweet on you. We children want to be sweet on you. We don't hate you. We want to build you. We want to, we want to help and strengthen your heart. We want to encourage you. So in building that relationship, we ask that you be sweet on somebody. You be sweet on your children. And start utilizing your talent. There's enough talent in here to build a church. There's enough talent in here to do anything we want to do. You just got to do it. You don't need permission from me. Do it. I give you free reign. You see something you want to do? Do it. Don't wait on me. Just do it. Teach these kids. Teach them how to love. Don't say it's time because they're starting high school. I mean, they're starting kindergarten. And before you turn your head, quicker than right now, faster than yesterday, they graduate from high school. Let's, let's kind of pull it back together on this Monday. day. There may be someone here that does not know Jesus Christ as a part of your sin. We ask that you will come to Christ. There may be someone here that's in a backside condition. We ask that you come to Christ. There may be someone that's like, you know, you're not fellowship. We ask that, you know, in order to be a member of the living word, you must come to the front and say, I want to join the living word. We ask that you will come. There may be someone here that's making a major decision in your life to pray with you. We ask that you will come. Lastly, there may be someone here that would like to be filled with the Holy Spirit with every is speaking in other tongues. As the Spirit gives you utterance, we ask that you come. As we sing, as we stand and sing, we offer Christ to you, my brother. We offer Christ to you, my sister. Come now while the blood is running warm in your veins. Amen.
strength and suspicion that God is going to do just what he says he's going to do. Amen. Well, come on, let's give God a hand of praise in his place. Amen. Thank God for um, Christina. Amen. Did a good job. Amen. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Again, uh, uh, ain't nobody mad but the devil. Amen. Again, we thank God for the graduates uh, this year. We thank God Amen. for Amen. Rosie. Amen. Amen. He's moving on. He's moving on up. Anybody else graduated? Anybody? I don't know. I miss all that. Amen. Amen. All right. If there's nothing else, let us let us uh, pray. Eternal God, our Father, we are. We thank you. We bless you. We magnify you now, Lord, as we prepare our hearts to leave this place, but never your presence.